email on their birth date. Um, it automatically just populates through uh, our spreadsheets. Um, you know, things like that. We're going to send them a little thing just to say, hey, we were thinking of you. Hope you enjoy your holiday. Thanks. Have a great day. Yeah. Yeah. That's what once, it... a quarter, once a quarter, we'll send them a special. Yeah. But... Hey, as a customer, you get 5% off or 10% off or, or whatever it is. Right. Um, I mean, if I had to do it again, I'd send, I, I wouldn't do it quarterly. I would do it sooner. I would probably do monthly or bi-weekly and be like hard, like backup specials, you know, sell them a backup hard drive and some software or um, a coupon, 10 bucks off your next visit, something like that. Just, and uh, I think it would work, but that's, that would be my tactic if I ever did it again. Keep them, keeping your list and, uh, and sending them out well, stuff. Well, you got to keep your name in front of their face and you know, one of the things that I found that became better with the emails and things like that is people, yeah, they see it. It may not register. They may delete it, but it's a lot better than I feel than radio or things like that. Because I mean, you get a 15, 20 second commercial, it's costing you a fortune. And how many times do they need to hear your name on the radio before they remember Oh, I gotta go here. All right. That's where you go. I gotta go here. Well, but I mean, they say. I mean, in the marketing stuff that I've been reading, I mean, they say seven to twelve times per month they need to hear or see your name to remember you. I didn't know if it was per month. I thought I heard it was seven to twelve times. Yeah, they Is... say per month. Really? Especially if you're doing radio or something, you know, a twenty-second TV spot or something. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you look at your big players that are out there that are, you know, your box stores, um, even Comcast, I mean, it's, you know, twice an hour. You're going to see a Comcast commercial or you're going to see oh, yeah, a totally. box commercial. Or you're going to see the, you're going to see a truck drive by or you're, you're going to get an email from them because they will email you because you're a customer of their cable service. I'm telling yep. you, if you don't email your customers, that you think people, you think Best Buy is not emailing you every week. I get an email from Best Buy probably every week, Tiger Direct every three days, because I bought something off them one time. <laughs> I mean, right. so for a business, if somebody bought something off you once, they're likely to buy off you again. It's just a smart thing to do, and it doesn't cost anything to send emails. I agree, um, and yeah, you've got to keep that stuff out there, and if you don't, um. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could be successful. Um, you know, send them something. Yeah. If nothing else, just thank you for being a customer. Thank you for your business. Sure. Um, and people appreciate that, especially as times are getting harder and, you know, you've got more and more people out of work and uh, different things like that. Uh, it's tough. So you, they're looking for the deal. And, yeah. and you can even sell, send them free tips, right? Like, uh, every once in a while too, just to like keep them informed and keep the goodwill and keep the communication in. Well, I had them, uh, I asked most of my customers when I was doing it to join my Facebook mm -hmm. and, um, I would just put stuff on Facebook. Um, there's that new one that's going around. What was it? I posted the other day. Um, Oh, the UPS and, and the FedEx ones are back. That are the emails that, you know, you need to, respond to this email for your uh, package delivery. You've seen them. They've been around forever. Phishing schemes. Yep. And that, and you open them up and they're, you know, they've got some type of a virus in there because you've got to open up the, the download to see what they're sending you. Um, foolish, but you know, stuff like that. We used to post that up on the Facebook and we would tweet it out or tweet it out and, and different things like that. So people would get it. So, at least they saw that, you know, when it was Umpire Computers, they saw, hey, Umpire Computers sent me something. They normally don't send me something. What is it? I want to know. Right. Right. <laughs> so we do that. I mean, there's lots of different stuff out there that you can do. Um, and that's part of what we're doing on our show. I mean, we're talking about advertising ideas and things that, uh, you know, not everybody's got twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in their pocket to go out and start a computer repair business. All right. Um, and do you really want to outlay that kind of money? I, I guess if you have it, it's great. Sure, if you want to do that, go for it. I would rather put that money back for the hard times when you know, you know 
spring and summer roll around and people are all outside and they're not using their computers as much and you slow down some. I agree. And there's no need uh, not to start off on a computer repair business. You do not need much. I, mean, I talked about it before. I had my car and a screwdriver and some CDs. That was it when I started. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I like AdWords because you can set you take it costs five bucks to sign up, and and you could just turn it off whenever you want. So it's not like you're dumping a whole bunch of money down up front and crossing your fingers like you do with the Yellow Book or a lot of other forms of advertising. You say, okay, it's going to cost me five hundred bucks to advertise for three months. You put they take your five hundred bucks whether you get a product or not. At least with AdWords, you could watch it minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, and if it's not working for you, you just turn it off. You know what I mean? And you don't have to you don't have to spend a lot of money. So that's one of the reasons why I always liked it. I mean, I, like we talked about earlier in the show, it doesn't work for everybody. It depends it, where you are in your competition. There could be a bunch of idiots around that are just inflating your bids, and you, it's not going to be worth it for you. But it's it's something to try. I still would try it. Yeah, it, it can hurt. I mean, like like you say, Steve, you can always turn it off. Yeah. My thing that I didn't go with it was I really worked hard on – my SEOs for my site. Um, organically, my site, and it actually still is, is on the main page. It's usually in the top two or three. Um, and I got lots of calls just from my website based on an organic level on the website. And we'll, we're will we going to talk about SEO and stuff like that on a later show um, in the next couple of few weeks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, again, this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to start the show because – Oh, I'm going to put up a website and people are just going to come. No, okay. Not, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Well, I'm going to go get a storefront and I'm going to put a sign on the front and they're just going to come. Mm, no. Usually that's not going to happen. Usually um, not. Unless you're in a highly populated area where people can drive by and see you and walk by and see you. Absolutely. I mean, these are the things that that have concerned us and we've all talked about it. And that's kind of why I started the show with, with the guys was, you know, people, I mean, there's still, and, and I'm not trying to belittle anybody or anything else, but the business side of it and thinking things like that is not the way to start your business. I mean, we want to help you to be successful, just like you've done with your videos. You know, these are going to help you be successful at repairing laptops. You've done a remarkable job with it. It's helped hundreds, if not thousands, of people with doing that. So my contrib contribution back is, okay, you've learned this stuff. Now let's learn how to run your business as far as, you know, how do I get marketing out there? How do I do cheap advertising? Well, one of the tricks I did, um, and it, again, here, we're, I mean, it's the same as AdWords. It may not work for everybody. But I bought business cards. I went through probably 500 to 1,000 business cards a month. And I would leave them everywhere. I would leave them on cans of paint at the hardware store. I would leave them on baked beans at the grocery store. I would leave them in a public restroom. I, I mean, I just left them everywhere. I did get in trouble once. I was, uh, it was Kmart. I think it was Kmart. And... Um, I was walking by the men's section and they had all these shirts like lined up and they all had like the sleeve pocket up here. Yeah. I just start plopping my cards and all the Dude, pockets. are you serious? Dude, I mean, it was it's remarkable how many different callbacks I got from just leaving cards everywhere and they're cheap. Now don't do that, dude. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm not telling you to go raid Kmart and put them everywhere, but I mean, that's just something I did. Everywhere I went, I left a card. <laughs> that's to awesome. I would go through the grocery store and they have these little, oh, they're little micro tables and they've got the little credit card machine here and a little bitty stainless steel table. Well, they got all this little space down here. And I would take just and leave a card there. I wouldn't even say anything to anybody. I'd just leave a card. <laughs> I would go out the door and they have the little ledge for the windows going out the, you know, the open automatic yeah, yeah, port. Yeah. I would leave a couple on the ledge and, <laughs> and just keep going. You guys need to get like a little machine that just, wherever you go, it just spits out a card behind you every. <laughs> 20 minutes <laughs> well and, and it's really funny because i learned this from a lady that had a home health care business and she did it with pens and she would just ah. drop 
she would wherever she went she had you know 50 100 pins in her purse and she would just drop one or two on the floor here and walk to the other side of the store and drop one or two on the floor there she would go to the kids concerts at school and drop three or four in the bleachers or on the floor i mean she was dropping pins everywhere they were more expensive but she said the the, the response from them was huge because oh i found a pin oh look oh cool well, i'll put that in my pin cup and they'll pull it up again and go well, maybe I can call these people, yeah. Did it work uh, for her? It worked well for her. It, it did, was, really. Yeah, it was huge. Well, see, everybody uh, wants a pen. I yeah. think I think it would work better for pens than business cards. But they're would... a little expensive. <laughs> You're going to pay $0.10, cents, $0.25, cents, something like that, if you buy them in bulks of like 500 or or 1000 Um, You know, all that stuff works. Um, bumper stickers is another good one that works. People see those all the time. Um, we were talking in TeamSpeak the other night about doing the, um, and this would be a good idea for, for somebody down in Florida or something, um, is those win window screens that you put in your car. It covers the interior so it doesn't get the the fading from the sun because it's you know so prevalent down there. Yeah. Um, and put your company name on it. I mean, sure. it's advertising. Oh, totally. I think anything you want to do to your car in a tasteful way was good good advertising. See, I did the untasteful thing, Steve. Um, one of these days, I, I think at one point I did send some pictures or posted some pictures somewhere. But um, I've got a car that sits out on the away from the building against the edge of the other parking lot, which is on the main street. And I took two banners one day because I was fighting with the city over signage and advertising. They wanted to charge me all this, and you could only have – no matter what it is, it goes towards your advertising. You only have 180 days a year. So I said, okay. So I went and I got two four foot tall and two five foot uh, long banners made. Said the same thing. Took a piece of rope, tied the rope between the two, and hung it over my car. <laughs> and it's been out there going on two and a half years, almost three years now. Really? <laughs> yep. And I rotate the signs, you know, we change them, you know, every couple of weeks, we'll change the sign to something else. And they can't say anything. It's on a moving automobile. It's legal. It's registered. It's got plates on it. Um, it's not affixed to anything. It comes right off. Now, do you uh, drive that car? Or it just, it's basically sits out there and holds the signs. Well, I used to, when I had my Cadillac, I would just drape them over. And when I went home, I'd take them off and, and go home. Um, my BMW is sitting out there now and it's just sitting on there cause I'm, I'm driving the Grand Prix. Um, so it just kind of sits out there for a week or two and then I'll switch cars and I'll drive the BMW and put the flags on the Grand Prix or, you know, something, but it sits out there all the time. So friends of mine, I, I'm sitting here and I got to tell you the story. I'm sitting here and we're, t I'm talking to some friends of mine that were big in the B and I and, and the, you know, the chamber of commerce and all that stuff with the city and, and they got to talking with the mayor and a couple other, you know, people that are up in that little grouping of, of higher up people with the city. And they mentioned my name and they're like, I'm parking. Why do I know that name? <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, he's the guy that's got the signs hanging out on the Cadillac down there on 8th Street. Yeah, that's him. I know where he's at. <laughs> that's great. I, I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm known for that. Um, it's corny. It's stupid. It's tacky. But it's worked. It's brought me a ton of business. Oh, if it gets results, it does, it's it, good. It does. It gets results. Now, again, here i got to throw that disclaimer to you guys that are listening or may listen down the road of, you may not be able to get away with this in your city, town, you know, village, whatever it is, if you're, you know, over in the UK or somewhere. So don't take that as, as a golden rule. You may get in trouble for it. They may tell you to take it down. Um, I know in Ohio, if you put uh, plates on your car, it has to be, or a, uh, magnets on the doors it then has to be registered as a commercial vehicle which is more expensive for insurance and everything else so i'm not saying that you're going to get away with this but i mean it's an idea you got to think outside the box because my belief and and i see this and I, it's proven and i've heard so many people on pod nuts and and you yourself steve talk about this is you're out of a part or you just want to go see the latest and greatest. So you go over to Best Buy and you walk through and you just have to look at the line at the Geek Squad. You have to. And you know they're charging them three, four times what you're charging in some cases. And they're slammed. Yep. Why? 
because of their marketing, their branding, yep. all of that that they're able to do with the money that they have that you can't because you don't have that kind of money to put, you know, 30 second commercial on two or three times an hour on 20 different channels, you know, every day. Right. It's, you, I mean, the common person doesn't have. So now you got.